Welcome, students, to Monk Meditation. The show about monks in the world of Warcraft. A new patch may be right around the corner. We're going to help you solo some old content for Transmog, and Celestalon tweets a lot. This is Monk Meditation, episode 15. Here's your host, Chai T. Welcome everyone to the land of very little news, but still a lot to get through tonight, so let's get right to it. We're gonna switch things up a little bit and go straight into... Storm. <laughs> Earth. <laughs> and fire! <laughs> Alright, we're gonna check in with tonight's hosts on how WoW is now. Let's start with Daikatsu. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. And I'll be doing even better on Friday when we finally kill Garage. Yes! We've got him to phase three, three times I think this past Friday we're getting phase two really cleaned up. It's, you know, that first empowered whirlwind, not a problem. Second empowered whirlwind hits us like a truck. But we'll get him this week. Yes, we will. And love is in the air started, so it's another holiday for me to not get him out. <laughs> <laughs> now Yuki, how you doing, man? Edamami Enterprise has caught up to Rolling Thunder. I am very, very oh. excited. We are on Garage as well, but I don't think we'll get the kill this week, so you have a week ahead of us, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're missing a couple people this week, so we're just going to run through, get more gear, and then next week, hopefully, I don't want to sound like a douchebag, but I hope you guys don't down them <laughs> so that we could stay even. And uh, hopefully we down them next week. But just like you guys, we're we're having trouble after the second phase with the whirlwinds. Uh, the first one, it's okay. Everybody can handle their own. But after the second one, it it does hit like a truck. So mm -hmm. um, a little bit more gear, I think we'll we'll get on through that. All right, I'm gonna switch over to air, man. How are you doing? Iron deficiency. Hey, so. Uh, we are still working on Siege Crafter Black Fuse at the moment. It's getting, getting better. Belt team is good. Platform team is good. We just gotta operate like a well-oiled machine, and we'll get them down this week. So, otherwise, you know, last week's, I believe they had a bit of a problem with the server issues. People couldn't log in. So we actually took our team and went and cleared Heroic MSV and Heroic Toes for fun. And... Let me tell you, if you want to uh, see the difference, beginning expansion, end of expansion with the eye levels and how powerful you can be, get your team together and go do that. It is a blast. You know, I did that on Saturday with Zillions, and I think it took us 45 minutes to go through all six bosses of Heroic MSV. Yeah, that, that should be, that sounds about right. That's, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> all right, Captain Crunch, how are you doing, man? Yeah. Same thing, different day. Doing all right. Uh, unfortunately, Drow died. I don't know if you guys caught up with that. Saw that. We were man. together for like ten years, so made a move over to uh, Exiled Legion on uh, Zuljin. I knew a lot of the members and whatnot over there. We're uh, US 39th. Don't quote me on that. I'm gonna go with 39. Um, we raid like I don't know, like four hour, five hours a week, full clear heroics. Very That's about nice. it. Yeah, still, Wait. still kicking. You continue on as a brewmaster in that team as well, then too. Uh, both main spec, main, uh, DPS, but when they need me to tank, I tank. You know, All right. Whatever the whatever the guild or raid needs me to do, that's just what I'll do. Right on. Just, yeah. All right. Well, me, we have found out how Rolling Thunder went. Um, all of us seem to be either be married too long or single or have significant others that are working because we will be raiding this Friday on Valentine's Day. Uh, we're going to walk in there and try to break Yisharge's heart. So I also took part in the All Monk Flex team, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And other than raiding, I spent some time with Air and Lady Chai uh, out on the Isle of Giants this week. And uh, we got everyone all of the pets and an egg apiece, so that was very yep. nice. 
Uh, what color did yours hatch into? I haven't clicked it yet, so we'll find out. I, I, I found mine in the middle of raid. I realized I still had it in my bank, so I actually got the last primal raptor that I did not have. So nice, nice. well Ray. done, Grats. Yeah, I <laughs> taunt swapping those T Rexes was quite exhilarating. It's um, good. It's fun to do as a windwalker. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so we also, I also started up a Torin monk in the All Monk Guild on Bleeding Hollow. I know Duke started up one as well. Yes, uh, I did too. Yeah. Torin I'm monk up to forty. Yep. I, bet you I thought I was the only one Torin. Um, they look awesome as a six. monk. I think I'm six. So <laughs> working right, so hard. Yeah, I, I wanted to go to Torin as well. So this this is obviously a big problem here. Come <laughs> on, we'll just make the Mukru. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, I was. I think trying it's a to different podcast we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to decide between Blood Elf. Um, I think it's Blood Elf male and Torn female. I decided I went with Torn female, so I'm Fatal Moo. So, yes, oh, I went Torn male. So Since uh, my main is male. a female, I went male. Like I went big kicks and I cannot lie. You <laughs> others can not. So over the weekend, we did the monk meditation. Um, all monk flex team. So we got all the way to Nazgrim. Uh, Naz was the only one that really gave us some problems. Uh, and we'll be setting up Wings 3 and 4 sometime soon, so keep an eye out on Twitter and on Cheapers.com. I know uh, J.Dot ran a Horde version of that. Mm -hmm. um, man, seeing all those kitties and spinning crane kicks, and those in the dojo can see that going right now, that was just ridiculously awesome. Yeah, we initiated yeah, it's spin ridiculous. cycle. Yeah, so. Those uh, mobs between the uh, fallen protectors and n uh, uh, whatever Norushen, mm -hmm. we just literally spun kicked spun kick our way all the way through, and no one even came close to dying. It was just twenty monks just spinning. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was. It's a it good was sight. a beautiful night. That yeah. is awesome. <laughs> So, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for that. We definitely want more people for 3 and 4. I think we had uh, 14, 15 people this time. So we'll definitely have room for more. So if you have an Alliance Monk, uh, keep your ears out. All right, well, it's time to get caught up in the crazy whirlwind of WoW News. In Dizzying Haze. All right, well, there is some news. PvP season ending as early as February 18th. Uh, we haven't gotten an exact date yet, but it could be coming pretty quickly. And 5.4.7 is quite possible around that time, too. Uh, it's probably going to be either that week or the week after when the new season starts. Um, so, uh, Air, I know you have Historically, some... it's been the same day. Right, but they could push it as, as late as a week out yeah. when the new season starts. So, yeah. here I know there was some information regarding the PvP here. Yeah, because like people are, you know, a new season comes out, people are always really looking forward to whether or not there's a new set of gear. And actually, for if you're up in that super high level to Grievous gear, um, you're getting the same exact gear. There are no new PvP patterns to get you up to the new uh, uh, season or anything like that. So, and also, if you're looking, if you're a transmog collector. Um, Alliance will now get the Horde color, and Horde will now get the Alliance color of the of the Season 14 gear, which, personally, as Alliance, I get the red color. It's much better for transmog. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> They're also bringing up the item level to 550 to start. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, th th there, there is a buff. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, another chance to get the, uh, the second Vicious War Saddle, I believe. Um, things like that, too, which is kind of neat. Yeah, you save, save your honor. Wait for after the patch and then buy all that, you know, juicy honor gear. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So if you're trans, interested... You gotta look cool now. You gotta look cool now. So, yeah. gotta, gotta wait for the Isle of Conquest weekend as Alliance and just grind. <laughs> grind. <laughs> Get well, I did do an Arachid Basin yesterday and somehow we held four out of the five thing places in Arathi as Alliance and I had to make sure that I didn't get a faction change to make sure I wasn't in the wrong place, because I didn't know that happened oh. still. Because, so. you know, obviously, uh, Alliance never wins random battlegrounds. No, never. 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 Yeah. Unless it's all Trek Valley. So. Yeah, or IOC. And Isle of Conquest. Right. <laughs> Which I'm working on a meta on. That's what I did last week, and that's pretty fun. So I hope to get a shiny new tagger one of these weeks. 
All right, well, now to keep your spirits up while the world changes around you in... The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Uplift. Don't worry, I'm sure it happens to other monks too. All right, 5.4.7 patch notes keep getting updated, so some interesting tidbits in them. Uh, we mentioned the PvP changes already, but Timeless Isle gear, the weapons, uh, the staff, dagger, things like that that you monks are going to want. Uh, not dagger, what the hell am I talking about? Staff, um, what else? Swords. Swords, mace? right, Sword. swords and maces. Okay. Maces, yep. axes. Yep. So that gear, instead of being 476 now, is going to be 489. So this is going to be even easier to gear up alts to get into the Siege of Orgrimmar very quickly. Uh, the PTR build also includes boost to 90. Uh, this isn't in the patch notes yet, but Warlord's pre-order may be soon. It's not active, but all the UI elements are there, and it's actually in testing on the PTR now. Uh, Take my money. Just doesn't work. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Is this going to be? Do you think it's going to be added in as the pre uh, pre buying? Not pre buying. Well, buying the collective pre order. Pre order. There we go. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they already said you're going to get the bounce, the pet, and the boost to ninety the instant you pre order, and yes, that the pre order this... is going to go live soon. Yeah. So is this going to be the pre order? boost yeah. or is this going to be the paid boost that they have uh, I'm sure about? they're going to do the pre-order pre boost first the okay. pre-order boost is guaranteed the paid boost is still pending a decision they have not said that oh, they're doing yeah. that yet yeah everyone's assuming but they've never came out and said yes or no. I, I apologize because who turns down money uncertainty yeah. Yeah. Yes. take my money <laughs> like, All right. I'll give you this it means I never have to do Burning Crusade on any other tune when yes. <laughs> all, all right now yuki uh want to go over some of celestalon's tweets here at least start us off i'm in florida duke by the way so i did catch your wallet uh, <laughs> only one dollar in there though so i'll give it back um at camden q on twitter ask any chance active talents on the same tier could all get a mage bomb style button he answers, yes, we will do this when it's appropriate for similar role all activities. So here's hoping for level 30 tier talents, uh, the Chi Burst, the Chi Wave, and Zen Sphere, and the Leg Sweep, Charging Ox Wave, and Ring of Peace. Yes, that would be nice. So the problem, the problem with um, like our level 90 tier is we have that uh, the change to the... Chi Torpedo, so that changes roll, and Rushing Jade Wind changes Spinning Crane Kick, so we can't get mm -hmm. all the level 90 button. But having the level 30 button would be very nice. You can create it via macros, though. It's yeah. buggy. What? Uh, I've, yeah, it, it works perfectly change. fine for the it level 30. It doesn't 30s. change, you have to refresh it all the time. Correct. Yeah. So having the mages have it, so they've obviously built it into the game. The mages have a mage bomb button. So. Is that similar to the win button? The, the DPS button? You know, that, no, that's DPS. our button. We keep that button. Okay. Yeah, we're not giving that button up, sorry. That's, that's right. No, you need to add two more for mages. Is that right? So, you know, one, two, mage bomb? Yes. Is, yes. is that how the, the jokes go? Uh, I'm new to the game. <laughs> I, so I'm going to take a beating from my wife who plays a mage. I don't think that works for fire. I think that's arcane, maybe frost. Yeah. Ar Mostly arcane. Arcane is the one in which you hit one, two, and then you fall asleep, and somehow you still do more DPS than everyone else. Yeah. Fire. Hopefully, Coltrane's not listening, but yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> hey, he admitted he's on, it. Our, he's on our side now. He's on our side. That's right. I seen him on. No, was, wasn't the he day. the one quoted on record with saying monks aren't in two button class like mages? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Captain, you're up next. What do we got from Celestalon? I have no idea. Okay. I'm <laughs> being dead honest. Pull up their really show notes, no man. Idea. Follow along. All right. Um, Humans a bitch. <laughs> Fixes in post. <laughs> yep. Uh, at Tanjon on Twitter asks, are things like Monk single tanking Blood Rage on 25 Heroic intended? Uh, he says, it wasn't an expected way to handle it, but it doesn't cause any problems, so we're fine with it. Is there something that you abuse, Captain? Hell yeah! <laughs> Damn right I did. I don't. I don't even think we've ever. I've never actually tanked that fight normal. It's always been single tanked, either by a monk or believe it or not, I've seen a pally do it. 
and one death knight but he's a rare breed so i'm not even going to mention him but <laughs> i've seen monks and paladins do it with pretty much ease but monks just kind of laugh at it they like go afk smoke cigarette come back and you know go into the next phase but um it's so simple i mean especially if you have the trinkets plus zen it's just it's a joke now is that is it just because of the trinkets or is it because of how the mastery build is set up it's it's a little bit of both you got um most of it it's zen really it, because that entire what is it seven seconds or whatever however long zen is you sit there and you take zero damage mm -hmm. so the entire time he's swinging at you you're taking zero damage and then the second you get out of it you pop the the trinket the aoe reduction trinket and i got a heroic one so now it's like 38 percent, and then you throw a bubble on me and i can sit there and eat it all day yeah, I mean, especially with guards. I mean, with your the amount of vengeance you're getting, your guards are like three mil. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I just it's uh, it may not be intended, but monks definitely cheese that fight like a yeah yeah like you know, it, Karn Punch, our brewmaster tank. Uh, he has a lot of fun with Malkarak tanking that solo. We we solo tank Thok as well too. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a really fun one to just watch, especially when you're approaching the 25, 26, 27 stacks, yeah. and uh, that gets a, a bit crazy then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So at W S Schwab on Twitter asks, any plans for a Windwalker statue for monks in Warlords? We feel left out. He responds, totally depends on if we have something that would fit well for a statue to do for them. And Duke, I think you, know, you had a response to that. Yeah, it's this is all I've heard the entire expansion. Windwalkers, give us a statue. Well, okay, what should it do? Don't know statue. Yeah, it should be it should be white and have lightning and look very cool. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a good They'll reply on Twitter. And for then that, you put though. the statue down, and yeah. it's like, oh look, it's a it's a six marker. <laughs> I think it should have uh, like a. Kind of like, remember, um, what was it, Retribution Aura? That's what I think that statue should be. If you remember back in, what was it? So every time Rash. they got hit with, uh, it's like a little yeah. mini touch of karma, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's the only thing I could think of off the top of my head. I would say. As far that. as what it, a. It's, it, it's you know, what does it really do? You know, for wind, for mist weavers, for brewmasters, you set the statue down in one place. You you obviously pick a smart place to put it down, but you put it yeah. down in that one place, and then you kind of go, okay, now it's sitting there. A little statue. Do you I think moved, I move my monk hmm? uh, statue a lot on Garrosh and Heroic Garrosh? Oh yeah, I move <laughs> mine on normal Garrosh. So, but yeah. you know, you have to pick the smart place to put it. But once it's down, it's just there. Mm -hmm. yeah, so true. what can it do that can sit there? Because you're not gonna. If you're gonna have to constantly move it over to where the boss is, you're already there. If you're gonna have to move it to where like the range is, yeah. Fair DPS point. should be busy punching boss butt. All right, and now Yuki, what did Underworld reply with? Um, he said perhaps a statue that gives a small damage buff to an ally for their next hit only, but not as much as less Quan than Lash. I think that was a good answer. Like a raid-wide cooldown for the next hit, like it crits for a lot or something. Okay. <sighs> it makes sense, like a, a cooldown, like every three minutes it'll pop and everybody will have that buff. Like a yeah, crit it's not really, like The problem is, is it's not really, like, I, I think we definitely need something like that. We need a raid utility cooldown, but I don't think that's good for a statue, like a one one-time thing, right? You need something no, that's... No, every three minutes, like you... Put your statue there, and every three minutes that pops. Yeah, it's, it's, right. You want it similar to, say, like a, a banner of some kind. Yeah, or kind yeah. Of much. Up but for Windwalkers, you just set it, forget it. The range is like ridiculous, so you don't have to constantly move your statue. The but you have that cooldown uh, for the raid. Cooldowns? <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't know. I kind of want something that has a an always on type of effect, like a like the Mistweaver, like the. Uh, mm hmm. Um, like the brewmaster thing. So. That's kind of it. So what is Windwalker missing as an always-on buff? Exactly. Yeah. 
and nobody really has an answer. Everyone wants it to be some kind of like crit lust, but isn't well, that better served as a button? Maybe something more like the the statue of the the ox, where because they have to do a certain amount of damage, and then it will uh, put a buff on on a random teammate, right? Yeah. So yeah, it that's puts a guard out. Right, puts a guard out. So we could, you know. Once we do a certain amount of damage, we give a buff to a random teammate or something like that, or you know, quick, you know, AOE burst or something like that. So, oh, the lowest or, DPS. Gets every a buff. time you crit, it gives somebody a mastery buff. That way, the mist weavers don't care. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go on to the next one. Air. All righty. So at Crackbird on Twitter asks. Are you guys happy with Windwalker Monk sparring? It just feels a little too random and annoying for both the monk and his opponents. So, you know, sparring's that thing where if you're uh, in front of an op opponent hits you in front, you get the kind of the stacking, uh, up to three times stacking buff to kind of, re is it reflect? It's parry, yeah. Parry their attacks, so, um, which I guess is good for PvP, theoretically. But... Celestalin replied, uh, It was originally intended to be a significant gameplay impactor, but turned out to be much weaker than intended. May revise. Okay. I, think I see it proc. I have no idea what's going on. It's like, oh, yay. But, I mean, if it, if it worked against bosses, you know, let's say you have to face the front of a boss and you're doing something cool and something hits you. I mean, that'd be kind of neat. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe. But in raid, typically, if the boss actually physically melee attacks you, you're not in a good shape. Yeah, yeah. That that's usually last one or two hits. Right. Unless you have touch of karma, then it's three. <laughs> 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 All right, going to switch to now, Yuki, for the next one. Uh, uh con at confusion. 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 Yep. Confusion. Yeah. <laughs> Ask, uh, why weren't monks a hero class? Um, perfect answer for this, but if you mean starting at a high level because it didn't fit the story we were trying to tell them, um, DKs were existing, powerful characters that are unleashed on the world well into their development and history. Another thing is, um, Blizzard made up for that with the uh, bonus to XP. Um, every I think you get it at level 20 if I'm not mistaken, but you get a daily that gives you 50% more XP, and on top of that, every 10 levels you get that same quest that gives you 50 more XP. So once you reach that 10 level mark, you technically have two hours worth of 50% more XP. So you add that with your heirlooms, you're leveling super quick. Um, there's a reason I got my Torin to 40. Mm -hmm. You know exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. and the thing is, you can stack that up too, if I recall. You can log in once a day, up to twenty-four hours. Yeah. yeah. And so, that's it's it's completely OP leveling. So it's it's, it's <laughs> great for monks. It's a good incentive to roll a monk in the beginning of the expansion to really get up there quickly too. Yeah. Which, exactly. if you want to feel really OP, so leveling is the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. And then it does kind of have a purpose in end game because it gives you mastery. So if you're room master looking for the mastery buff and you don't have a Windwalker or one of the other classes that gives you that mastery buff. Although that used to stack. That used to know. stack. That was yeah. nice. During MSV days. Yeah, I remember that. And there would be huge mastery. Six thousand master. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get a lot yeah. of combo breaker with that. I used to <laughs> grab it before raids. Right yeah. before raids, so we'll go and grab it. Yeah. So the. Um... The only thing I didn't really like about that answer is that the fact that he, he said that DKs were existing powerful characters that were unleashed on the world. I mean, monks had been sitting out there on the Wandering Isle for 10,000 years. They were existing characters, too. Um, yeah, but granted, they the weren't story granted the power with, from the Lich King, but... Yeah, but the mm -hmm. story of a DK is that you were a hero that fell in battle against Arthas, and now he resurrected you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas monks so, were just fat pandas. Hey, a monk! Yeah. yeah. It's like, true. I guess I start my journey today. And that's, you know, that's kind of how monks started. Whereas DK is just like, uh, welcome, you were dead, we killed you. Welcome to the right side. Yeah. <laughs> now, they, he kind of dodged part of the answer, though, I think. Because um, they could have 
still labeled Monk as a hero class, right? And given they us an XP that buff, price and like wrath, that. right? But, I mean, if we already have one and there's a new class added, why can't they call it call it a hero class? I mean, it's really no. I guess it's just a, a terminology thing because it's really no different. Yeah. DK is just a class now, so. Yeah, they they, they paid the price dearly. Well, they paid the price dearly in Wrath with DKs because at the beginning of the Wrath expansion, DKs were so overpowered because of what was happening in Wrath because everyone kept telling, oh, it's a hero class, but I don't feel like a hero. So they kept buffing it up and up and up and up and up, and suddenly DKs come out and are soloing next 10 almost right away. Mm -hmm. And then they had to nerf them down and nerf them down and nerf them down. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, if you look at the history of a DK, you know, the Windwalkers have had it pretty bad this expansion, but you ain't got nothing on DKs. Yeah. I figured it was a bit up and down at the time, so... Yeah. Whereas for DKs, it was just a constant slide down. It's like, I miss mm. bullet DPS. All right, let's move on to the next one, Daikatsu. All right. At Kieran Z asks, I was wondering if you got my tweet about adding a Merciless Trinket to Mistweaver Table Loot. And Celeste and I replied, it's not intended for them. A bug allows it to work for them, but we decided to leave it so we don't hurt existing owners. And in case you're wondering, he's talking about the 7% intellect damage uh, uh, trinket that, you know, it just so happens to 7% stacks on you if you have an intellect-based spec, and Mistweavers do. And if you do any damage by fist weaving, you get a nice intellect buff that is separate from your um, Shaw Pride amp trinket. But really, we're not supposed to have that. You know, it's the same it. reason why <laughs> we're not supposed to have it. I wrote Go give it back. Thank you, Ray Go give it back. <laughs> give it back to the nice maids that it belonged to. He has his. It's like, Don't shard it, it or give it, give it to the mistweaver who doesn't really know how to mistweave. And it worked out very well like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic trinket for us because an extra 7% to the, all the you know, uh, crit damage, haste, mastery, mm -hmm. uh, spirit, it, it's fantastic. 8% normal or on heroic, too. Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's 8% if you upgrade it on normal. All right, it's 9% right. for you heroic. But, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic trinket. It's not meant to work, but it's not breaking anything. And Blizzard's policy is, if it's not breaking anything, we'll leave it. It's interesting. All right, so at Diablo Ninja asks, Speaking of trinkets, is there any reason behind no agility amp trinket? Using a strength one as brewmaster is a weird choice, and it's best in slot in normal without Warforged. So we're obviously talking about the Thok's tail tip from Thok. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought Celestalon's answer was a little funny this time. I'd be suspicious of whatever theorycraft found it to be optimal to use that. Hmm. Haven't we mentioned Listen, on this show a few times? I thought uh, Sh uh, Sha or Shamans. I thought they dropped a Adji Trink. That like one's that. a. It, that's a multi strike. That's Parans, which is the yeah. Oh, and okay, multi strike yeah. is is really good. Yeah. For for DPS, but yeah. having that amp trinket, especially at the heroic levels, is pretty nice. But well, yeah. you know, your your crit chance, you know, in the mid five, in the five seventy, five seventies above, you're getting close to that. You know, if you do a will in that sixty percent kind of base that a lot of people talk about, that you know, that's when crits start happening all the time. So if you if you're critting that much, the damage boost to your crit is huge. And I, the theory crap is they're always talking about, you know, it's not going to make you crit more, but your crits will just hit that much harder, and because you're yeah. critting so much, it's a, it's a DPS gain over some of the other trinkets. Yeah. I, yeah. Now, now, it's only best in slot if you have something else that'll buff your crit. That's the thing. If you're not really going for a crit build, which I don't know why you went into a Windwalker, but if you're not going for that, it's not going to be much help to you. Right. Well, you know, once you're comfortable with haste, everything else goes into crit. So yeah. you'll yep. be you'll be yep. uh, pushing really high levels of that, right? You know, once you get up, if you're, if you're fully decked out, um, so it's, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of hard not to use at that level, I think, if you're lucky enough to get one. If all your yeah. strength users have it, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I was about to say that. 
Yeah. It's like my, my guess why there's no entrance is there's a lot of agility-based DPS specs more than strength or intellect-based that would fight for it. So they would almost have to make a drop-off of two bosses to give it a good distribution. Right. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Yeah, so um, at F Hidden Shadows 57 continued, he said, I guess that brings up the discussion. Is the amp effect worth ditching your proc? And uh, Slesson says, it's commonly forgotten that amp increases crit damage, not crit chance. So it won't increase elusive brew uptime. So that's something to keep in mind of. So Celestalon, we appreciate you tweeting and, and uh, keeping our show notes nice and long. Thank you. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> now it's in time There's to a lot of good information with that, for sure. Indeed. Oh, yeah. All right. Now it's in time to part impart some tips and tricks for those raiding monks out there in this of fury uh, yeah! it's go time all right so today we delve deeper into ragefire chasm this time to approach general nazgrim so tanks captain that would be me yep <laughs> um this fight <clears throat> this fight's a little bit of a giant pain, in my opinion. Uh, there's a lot of talents you can go here. Uh, one thing you do want to make sure you're doing is you're disarming um, the melee guys. I forget their names. The guys Iron. Always spin Iron Blades, Iron, yeah, I think Iron I something or other. Whatever. Um, if you don't have a Windwalker Monk in your group... Uh, go, you know, take it upon yourself to disarm them. Um, you'll, you know, save someone's life. That's for sure. Uh, talent choices. I like dampen harm on this, just because you're getting hit a lot, and sometimes things happen where there'll be a lot of ads out, and then you know you can't do tank swats right away. So sometimes you might have to go up to that four, maybe even fifth stack. Um, so having another defensive cooldown is pretty big. Um, some people like using Russian Jade Wind on this. Why, I do not know. Um, I think it's more for cheesing and stacking, trying to make yourself look better. Um, but in all honesty, the dog um, or T Torpedo, if you're constantly moving around a lot, it really depends on what kind of um, strat you're using. If you're using a strat where tanks don't move and everything goes to tanks, then sure, you could use Russian Jade Wind. You know, why not? Why not make yourself look bigger and better? Um, but if you're using a strat where you have, you know, a boss on one end and adds on another, you know, Chi Torpedo or maybe even the dogs would be a good choice. Um, a lot of people forget that the dogs are controllable now, um, especially as a tank. You can tell your dog, hey, dog, go over there and tank that, and he will do it. Um, and a lot of people forget that. Um, I tend to try to use it as much as I can, but, you know, I'm greedy. So I would probably go with Rush Jade Wind, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> but other than that, I mean, that that's pretty much it. Um, talents don't really need to change. You would just use the same as you would um, the fight prior. Um, but other than that, um, Chi Wave's a good one here. Um, Chi Burst, if you're doing the Cheese and Way and you got everything stacked on top of you for, um, for heals on the melee as well as the, the increased damage done. Um, that's about it, man. That's that would be the tank roundup for that fight. All right, Air, you want to handle okay. windwalking? Yeah. So, um, depending on what you need, like you can use Storm Earth and Fire on this fight. Um, just depending on what your priorities are. If you're having trouble getting down specific ads, you definitely want to use single target. But um, you know, you are in defensive phase. You can just pop out a clone on uh, Nazgrim because your clone will not give him rage. So even though if you're expecting to uh, uh, Russian Jade win for whatever reason, if you're you know stacking things up, you can pop that as he does his auto attack damage because you're not really doing too much else. Uh, spinning Crane Kick out a little bit extra, but it's just there to keep you from doing zero damage to him. Uh, you're going to want to look at, uh, you know, you want to make sure you're always using your interrupts on Magic Strike for the magic guy. Use your slows on the assassins. Uh, grab a weapon on the iron blade. 
personally, I like to use uh, Dampen Harm on this fight, just in case you happen to get to one of the adds before uh, he's able to get aggro on him. If you're, if you're, if you're three-tanking this strategy, we actually run with three tanks because it just makes things a lot cleaner in the back. So um, you can save yourself pretty quickly by taking a couple hits by popping that every now and then. You make sure you're using Fortifying Brew when you see the uh, War Scream or the... War Song. War Song, there we go. Uh, and Touch of Karma, make sure that's ready to go whenever you know you're going to be about to take some damage or get into kind of a iffy situation. Um, if you're looking to change your glyphs a little bit, you know, you, I think for most of these fights you always want to have Touch of Karma glyphed just because you're going to be far away from stuff throughout the fight. You never know when you're going to need to pop that real quick. <clears throat> um, and I know that, Chai, you said you like to use healing elixirs on this. On normal, I think healing elixirs is a good one because um, healing on this fight is very sporadic. Because um, you get hit by that bone cracker and mm -hmm. that's the healers are not necessarily always on top of that because they're trying to keep everyone up for standing and pooping, getting hit by ads and everything like that. And that can start going down. And so having that, that constant, you know, uh, Pot top ups when you're you're using your brews all the time. So uh, the dampen harm, I mean, it has its place obviously, but and and it can be useful. But I think you'll get more effect out of healing elixirs on this fight, at least on normal, because uh, like I can take a few shots from the ads, except for that uh, iron guy. That guy's a jerk. Iron blade. Iron, iron blade, blade. Yeah, but that's what your. Uh, your charging ox wave and your fist of fury is for <laughs> keep mm -hmm. his butt stunned. Uh, so yeah, I prefer healing elixirs, but I don't think damn and harm would be wrong. Uh, I think that the diffuse magic doesn't have a place in this fight. Uh, I don't it, really use it too often either. Yeah, it can get no. rid of magic strike if, but you should be interrupting that. So hopefully, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> should be using whatever talents you have to get there as fast as possible. Keep him stunned and nuke him down. Exactly. You know, save, uh, save your save your range guys a little bit of trouble there too. All right. So now you hear Duke. Which one are you taking this? I can't believe you didn't mention the DPS increase with disarming. Oh, I thought we were the in you. Five I have it now. DPS increase. Disappointed yes. in no, you. No, he did. He did. He said disarm the Ironbound guy. That will. Yes. No, I said that. No, did no, Air <laughs> did as well. I remember. So, so yeah, we have know, it recorded. Is, if, we'll if go you're back looking to, to max your DPS. Uh, and this goes for any, especially fighting any of these orcs throughout this uh, this this fight. You can just, you know, Dark Shaman, uh, you can do this with bosses, which is great. Make sure that you're using grapple weapon essentially on, you know, if not on cooldown, line it up with your Tiger's Eye Brew, line it up with whatever you can for a DPS boost, because that's it's 5% increase, and then if you're adding a 60% on top of that, it's it adds up pretty quickly. Yeah, it does. So yeah, you want to you want to be grappling everything. Create a macro if you want to help out. You know, a target, uh, uh, iron blade, grapple weapon, target last target. That way, with just one button, you can help out whoever's uh, you know your tank if he's taking the iron blade, um, take reduce damage and give yourself a boost on whatever else you might be on too. All right. How's that? That's <laughs> much better. A little bit better. <laughs> Same thing works much, for mist weavers. Get those weapons. Boost to healing. All right, I'll test, and now Yuki for the healing. Really? No. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> um, but Duke could take it if he wants, because I did take last week's. Well, it, this it's an it, it's a fun fight. It's one that will reward just about equally if you're mist weaving or fist weaving, because you know you you can't just sit on the boss and DPS on the whole time. So you do have to be mobile, even if you're fist weaving, um, especially every time the ads come out. A uh, couple of things, uh, talent choices that work here. Diffuse magic is nice. The the, the uh, arc weaver, the magic strike debuff. But honestly, if that starts to go out, we have a lovely button called revival, which will clear it, and then you yell at the person who missed the interrupt. <laughs> um, it's probably a lot better for you just because of the assassin that likes to come out and target healers to take damp and harm. Because otherwise the assassin will kill you in about three or four strikes, whereas with Damp and Harm, it might take him five. So you get that extra one to run away from him. And you're going to be running away from him a lot. Um, 
charging Oxwave is very nice to stun the ads, especially the, the, the whirlwind of death one because he likes to kill everyone around him. And when he does come out, we're in a good place. Just crackling Jade Lightning and help take him down a little bit. Um, as for glyphs, there's not really anything that's kind of useful except glyph of Zen Meditation to kind of glyph Zen Med, run around. That way you don't lose it while you move. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that you might want to stay away from rushing Jade Wind as the level 90 talent. You might want to go with uh, Shwen or, yeah. or Zwen or however it is that you say it. So, yeah. Zwen, Zwen, Shwen, Shwen, Pele, Shustor, what? Right, Magic Kitty. Um, so you want to select Magic Kitty. When he goes into defensive stance, it's only players that give him rage. So... Windwalkers will put Storm Earth and Fire. Hopefully the Brewmasters and the Mistweavers put Magic Kitty on him. And he'll still be taking DPS. If you're a Mistweaver, healing will still go out to everybody. And no rage. And that works for all pets. So hunters, put your pets on him. Do whatever the heck you want. During defensive stance, just don't do it on Growl. Right. <laughs> Correct. All right, now you can get anything to add there? Yeah, um... On this fight, I try not to choose Zuyan, or the White Kitty. Um, I try to Magic take uh, <laughs> sorry, Magic Kitty. Uh, I try to take Chi Torpedo just to get like in and out very fast, help with healing. Uh, the reason being is because it is a three-minute cooldown. I mean, it does help with DPS, but most of the time, if I'm helping with DPS, I'm fist weaving. If not, I'm just strict uh, mist weaving. So it depends on how the fight goes. If I'm mist weaving or fist weaving, um, if we're not taking them down fast enough, I DPS. If we are, I just run around and heal and do my normal thing. Um, yeah. Wait, do now you're it, it's really a cheat great... torpedo. What? I'm sorry. What? Now you keep liking cheat torpedo on a fight. What? Oh. What? That's on most of the fights. I love cheat torpedo. <laughs> Unless I'm strictly, strictly fist weaving on a fight like Thok, um, that's like pure uh, rushing Jade Wind right there. But on most yeah. of the fights, I'm Cheat Torpedo. Yeah, Na Nazgrim is a good fight for you to get the concept of switching gears. Go from mist weaving to fist weaving to mist weaving to fist weaving multiple times over the fight. All right, well. Yeah, I can't even count how many tomes I go through on, on Siege of Orgrimmar. Every fight, I'm switching talents. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, Daikatsu, you mentioned using Zuin during defensive. One thing for Windwalkers, you want to probably want to try using it during Berserking Sense, because he is taking more damage, so it does make that three-minute cooldown that much more effective, too. And it does line up pretty well, too, if I recall. Yeah, yeah for Windwalkers, you want to save uh, Schwen for, for Berserker Raid. But yeah. during defensive stance, put your Storm Earth and Fire on his butt. And yeah. hopefully there's an ant to kill. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you're just sitting there she waving yourself and spinning around like a crazy person. So. No, it, it, that's and that's that's if if you're having trouble with ads, single target them, get them down. You know, especially if one in particular is really hurting you guys, make that the priority. Don't worry about. Don't look at numbers. Don't split yourself up because you're him. Because since you're only doing sixty percent or forty five percent of your normal damage, it's, you, that ad is going to go down lower mm -hmm. as you get more into farm. As you get more comfortable with getting these down, you start having less problems. We'll put up the numbers, have fun, get used, you know, get uh, practice with SCF because you're going to need it for later in the fights too. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, now, students, it's time to meditate and expand our knowledge in transcendence. transcendence. All right. So let's go back in time, soloing old content. So we're going to talk about some fights that. People have problems soloing, uh, tips to help overcome some of those uh, problem fights, and some fun transmog sets, hopefully. All right, so let's start off in Ankaraj. So really, this place is not too hard at, at these item levels that we're getting up to. However, yeah. there was, is one boss that if you go in there unprepared, you will sit there whacking him for about two hours and not do anything to him, and that is yep. Viscidus. <sighs> And unfortunately, this is one of these jerks that actually has a pet to drop. So if you're a pet battler like uh, Captain over there, then... I have it. Yeah, you need to try to figure out some way to do it. And a way to do this is... There's a couple different ways. You Use a DK. 
Right. <laughs> there, <laughs> that's how frost I. Age. Yes, there frost are. Age. You have to have something that does frost. Now, monks, you do have some options here. Alchemists have a thing that they can make called frost oil. You can coat your weapon with it and beat it up. And someone pointed out on Twitter uh, that you can actually buy a weapon in the Storm Peaks that does frost damage. Thank you, Kinlay. Yep. All right. So you can go. I did not know I that. Haven't, I haven't tested that yet. I would like to, but yeah, when I was going around doing, oh, I need this for my pet collection because for some reason I have a pet collection. <laughs> I just logged onto my DK and I figured that worked. Pets yep. are a compound. Yep, that they are. That's how I did it. Yep. I, I hate that place. I hate AQ. <laughs> yeah, yeah I got all three AQ pets fans. and I've never seen it since. Yep. The gear is ugly as sin unless you are a plate wearer and want to look like Spider-Man. <laughs> you get all those scarabs in your bank that you can't to manually delete each one oh, in your bag. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I it's usually go in there and This is back don't. in the day when Blizzard said, stacking what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, if, you know, if there's someone you don't like, you know, you send it to them, so they have to manually, because you can mail those, so. <laughs> is it, is that, it an that auction house spot you want to annoy for a little bit? No, 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 don't be sending them to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just forward them to Duke. All right, let's go next to um, Northrend into Ulduar. One that has a lot of problems is Thorim. Air, you want to handle that one? It's kind of a weird mechanic because you have Thorm on this top level, got all these ads, and a lever you got to push on the bottom level. So actually soloing this, I still have yet to solo it, but if you go there with two people, it's really easy. You just keep someone down below. You run through the hallway, you know, hit the lever because the ads won't be touching you at that point. Um, uh, run through the hallway, get up to Thorm. I'm in reading and seeing this. You can also, it looks like you can take uh, Zuin to kind of have him tank stuff down below. Um, I just haven't had any personal luck with that, so I need to stop being a noob and work on that, but uh, that's an option you can have, too. Yeah, you're not the only one. That's a, that's a really, really tough fight for monks. Yeah, I think you have to be perfect timing. You have to have your transcendent set up and Zuen and mm -hmm. run like the dickens. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's a it will one -shot just you. about anybody. Right. That electric ball one-shots anybody. Yep. I mean, we, we can expect a rating with Leashes 3 to come out soon with Ulduar and probably maybe Trial at the same time. And that's about the point at which they'll address Thorim and make him soloable. Which is, I believe, who was it that might have said that on Twitter? Maybe it was Celestial that said that on Twitter. Mm -hmm. That usually they address soloability when they drop pets. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's why they nerfed Viscidus down. And before you used to need a lot of Frost hits. Now you need like five oh, or yeah. six. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what was the one that they changed in Nax? I forgot. Uh, I haven't read Nax in a long time. Was this Sarth? No. Thaddeus? Was it Thaddeus that had the plus and minus? Yeah, I think so. That's yeah. the same, yeah. 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 Was, nah, yeah, it might be that. But yeah, they, they've, had, they've had to go back and redo these bosses to be quote-unquote soloable in, in order for you to be able to get them. Um, another one was uh, Blackwing Lair. The first boss in Blackwing oh, yeah, Lair was almost impossible. Before, yeah. mm -hmm. so. One thing to keep in mind if you're running Old Juar is with the, when you get down to Yogg, especially if you're trying to achieve snow lights or anything like that, be very mindful of where you're standing uh, when you get into the brain phase because you really want to watch those insanity levels and things like that. So, mm -hmm. cause, uh, it's, if you take two people, it gets really weird with the mechanics, so it's actually better to go with a bigger group or solo it, I think. Mm -hmm. So you can you can yes. kind of get rid of some of the mechanics that way, but two is it, not the happy hard. number. No. Yeah. I le we learned three that. is a good three is a good number. Okay. Three is a good number for ten man, but I once tried to do yogs around twenty five with five people, and let me tell you, that was a cluster. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the I, I never gosh. knew I could have seventeen debuffs ticking on me at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, going back to AQ, I ran into this problem the first time I ran it. Is um, you know I use LVI, and at the time I had a lot of my I don't have all my bars. It said Windwalkers, we never need a stance bar, right? Right. Well, that first boss and or that that last boss in AQ, the old god, he does some kind of thing where he kind of changes all your bars around, and he actually can pull you out of your stance, your windwalking stance. Uh. So if you do not have your stance bar showing, and he pulls you out of the stance. 
there's no way to get back into it unless you have it bound somewhere else. So be very careful that's, for that. That's Good what tip. happens. Okay, I remember one time I... <laughs> <laughs> I the remember light bulb when, goes off. Yeah, I remember yeah. one time I showed up back in Stormwind. I was like, "Where the hell did all my abilities go?" Mm -hmm. So what? you want to be careful. Make sure your stance bar is showing, even if it's just a mouse over somewhere. Because if you get some of those kind of funky things going on, uh, you can kind of sit, center yourself, meditate a little bit, get back into where you need to be, and get back to kicking boss. Interesting. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move back into Burning Crusade and go to um, what is the Kelthalos, right? The Ashes yeah. of the Lost. Oh, Kelthalos. Oh. You could run bane. past all the bosses in that and go straight to him. Yep. Yes. Back the earlier in this year, I, I tried this. I tried this around tier fourteen, thinking, "Yeah, I'm a big bad guy. I can go do level seventy content, no problem." He kicked my ass. Well, it's not really him. It's the ads. It's the rogue yeah. and the mage. They're such yeah. a pain in the ass. Yeah. And then they would mind control you, and anything with yeah. mind control, especially when you're going with a couple of people just for fun. It's like mm -hmm. they'll mind control the badass monk, and the monk will just destroy everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So exactly, that's why you solo it and you don't pop Zuyan. Because Zuyan, yeah. if Zuyan's out, he'll mind control you, and then it's a wipe. Yep. If you solo it. I, don't know, I like using Zuyan for that fight. Yeah, but you I, can't I'll, I'll use it during that phase because if he's when out, all four are out. Exactly, you get mind controlled, and then you're just beating up Zuyan, and then the fight's over. You have to start all over again. Yeah, it hasn't. Okay, I've been lucky then. It hasn't happened to me. Yeah, <laughs> I just keg smash and things die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Brewmasters are OP on yeah, that fight, yeah. but like, I'll think, if you're fist weaving, I'll, it's pretty tough. Rushing J win is really good because even though you're mind controlled, you can still do damage to the things around you. So make sure you're mm -hmm. popping that. Make sure you're spamming your your touchy. You know, you have your chi built up in the in the uh, you know for whatever for a rising sun kick. Spam that rising sun kick button uh, to. <laughs> Get uh, you know get off a 300 400k hit, uh, you know a little bit less if you're. I think I first sold this around the mid 480s, so it's really easy to do. So you got to time your cooldowns, get dampen harm up, uh, Russian Jade Wind. You want to make sure you save your nimble brew because you could that will get you out of one of the mind controls. And I think if you use big wigs, you can also see when the mind controls are coming in as well too. So that'll help yeah. too. Yeah, do you I, I actually decided to see before the show can I do this it's okay let me go in so sure enough I walk in there and that phase where all four of them are on top of you the best thing to do is kill that mind control guy quick and then just try and chi uh, 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 what is it uh, chi wave to do some damage while you're mm -hmm. being stunned and moved around a lot but yeah you, you want to take care of the mind control guy you want to take care of the mage next and then you want to go after the rogue and then finally the last guy will, will, will drop real quick after that, if you can get through those four, Kael'thas drops like, God. Yeah. yeah. If you can't, Glyph, touch, uh, touch of death, and just sit there, waiting. It does, as soon as you get a chance, bing, doesn't matter how much she you have, which is real nice, too. Yeah, I, I actually did it as a Mistweaver, so it was kind of nice to heal myself while, you know, the, the two or three seconds I could do damage. All right. Fair enough. <clears throat> All right, let's move into Cataclysm. This is when it starts getting trickier. Yeah, you, you don't want to talk about Black Temple. Black Temple is... Reliquary of Souls has a lot of trouble for, for people because of the incoming I, damage. Which can one? somebody Base. actually do it solo? Cause I, yeah, I've soloed that entire time. place a few times. So which yeah, one is it? at, at the four right. eye level of Reliquary, you just want to make sure you're, you're you know, save Touch of Karma, save Damp and Harm, oh, save... Oh, right, 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 right. The, the shards and... Exactly, there's a lot of coming okay. damage, so you know, save that for your main. Everything else is really easy. Save that for your main burn phase, and uh, when you get to that okay. particular part, just destroy everything. Pot, uh, make it so there's no chance you will die for that, and you should be able to get to that pretty quickly. And again, this is something you could do in the you know easily below a 500 item level, which is real nice, because um, who doesn't want to eventually get to uh, the big guy? Uh, to you know, get a chance at a legendary, and everyone, you know, you see so many monks running around with the cursed vision yes, of Sajerus, yep, the I've black got that sitting in my bar. bank right now. That's yep, a, over the eyes, because every monk has to have that. So uh, that's a, that's some really good transmog opportunities in there as well too. Yep. Okay, if, there, if there's a ton of damage going out during Reliquary of Souls, there's a real simple fix. Go, min go Mistweaver. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. And let's move into Cataclysm now. These, this is when the difficulty level steps up, because this is the most recent expansion besides Mists. So let's start with Blackwing Descent. This one's still decently easy, especially on normal, uh, but there's one fight that can cause some problems. Uh, Maloriac? Is that how we pronounce it, I think? Yep. Maloriac. Yeah. yeah. So who wrote this one down? I wrote most of these down because right. um, I I tried it over the weekend actually. Maloriac, well, magma I think his name is easy as cake, mm -hmm. especially as a mess. We were just fist beef, rushing Jake Wynn. the other boss same thing. When I got to this guy, I I just couldn't do it because once you get to the cold phase, and he traps you in ice, there's no one there to uh, free you. I mean, you could probably pop Zuyan and have him break you out, but at the same time that fire phase where he blasts you at fire, is mm -hmm. kind of tough to heal through as well, even with the hamster ball. Mm. So for me, that was a, a little tough to solo. I'm going to go back in and see if I could do it, but for now, that ice phase was uh, pretty rough. Yeah. Anyone got any tips for that, Martin? I haven't That's... gone to solo at all. I've only done with groups and things like that, specifically. Mm -hmm. um, the... Uh, to get one piece of transmog gear, I think it's one of the coolest set of shoulders in the yeah, game. The pauldrons, right? Yeah, the, the old uh, version, the heroic version. Well, I have both. You have the blue version, yeah. and you have a, the gold heroic version. Mm -hmm. Both are fantastic. They have, like little wings that drop feathers. Yeah. Um, you get that off one of the first bosses, I think. I forget exactly which one it is, though. The, uh, the robot-looking ones. Oh, the Omnitron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So See, I want the I want the acid one from from that boss too, but. Never get it. Oh yeah, that's right. Because you got the the wind tier set or the wind look uh, yeah. Yeah. look like one from that too. Yeah. Yep. Just don't get it, the helmet. It, it looks awful. Two two person, you can easily uh, do that on. Especially go with a tank. You should be able to get that down. Uh, two or three people on heroic without too much of a problem. Heroic soloing is it's so close uh, with a windwalker. It's just being able to do that much damage, but. And if you're at the low, like maybe you know mid 500s, lower 500s, it's going to be a bit more difficult. So you definitely want to bring a friend. All right, stepping into Firelands, <clears throat> uh, one of them that can be really tricky is uh, Balarak. Yeah, I love this fight solo. It's so <laughs> much fun, especially if you're a brewmaster. The trick yeah, is to be brewmaster and guard protect yourself, everything else, because he's going to wail on you. While he's yeah. wailing on you, your health is going to go up and up and up and up. Mm -hmm. And eventually his health will dip below the several million health that you have. And that's when you touch of touch death. death him. Gone. Yep. If Very you hard are, as a mist weaver. Yeah, it is. That's, you have to be brewmaster to really do it right now, because windwalker and mist weaver can't DPS fast enough to overcome the damage. Yeah. But as a brewmaster, you have so many options to just soak the damage, stagger it away, dodge like crazy, and then finally when your health gets over that tip, you hit one button, he's down, yay loot. Mr. And he has got some fantastic shoulders as well. Yep, yeah. I, I, I track those every week with this a friend. This is you want still... for the, uh, the shadow pan set you're building, right? It, it does look good for shadow pan, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the heroic purple version is fantastic if you're putting together a shadow pan transmog. Mm -hmm. the, the rest of the bosses really aren't too much of a problem to solo as a windwalker either. Um, I, you know, going in there, the, the ads are really easy to do. You do take a lot of damage from Shanox, um, so just be careful. You know, rotate your cooldowns when you can. Uh, Alice Strazer is probably the easiest one to go, even if you, even if you just want a chance for the mount that oh, yep. uh, yeah. she drops, because you just get used to flying. Yeah. Run through the or fly through the rings, DPS or rotation the best you can. And uh, it's great. You to should look at have her down. The solo, you should have her down by the time the first transition phase starts. Pretty close to, yeah. yeah. If you're hitting every ring. I mean if you look down you're getting you're up in that two hundred percent, two hundred and fifty, three hundred percent haste. Mm -hmm. And so it's 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 pretty fun to see numbers like that, and you never you're like energy capped the entire time, which is kind of funny. I've yeah. I've seen mist weavers do the same thing. They're flying through the winds, but the whole time they're hitting crackling jade lightning. Mm 
And as yeah. the haze goes up and up, they're almost hitting Crackling Jade Lightning like it's tick. GCD goes, another tick, hit it again, hit it again, hit it again. It's insane wow. damage when your haste gets up that high as a Mistweaver. Interesting. Yeah, it's a lot okay. with uh, Chi Wave, Spinning uh, Crane Kick, and well, the Rushing Jade Wind, and uh, yep. Crackling Jade Tiger. All yep. right. Yeah. You know, you should never have to touch the ground for that phase, which is real nice. So that makes it a real easy one to solo for, for just about any class, too, is nice. Yep. All right, but, any other uh, transmog items that are good to go for out there? Baylor, you know, the, you have the, the World Drops Volcano Spike, which is a really cool-looking sword. You yes. uh, Off Ragnaros, you have some really nice-looking maces, which are cool, um, that actually travel to fire the trail. The Sulfurous Hammer, that's kind of neat-looking. You can get that, but that's 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 two-handed, two we can't wear that. Is Go that back. a two-hander? Yeah. Yep. That is a two-hander. Yeah. Shoulders Paladin off Paladin. of uh, XT, the ones with the claws that come out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is a nice one. Those are my shoulders right at the moment. Yeah, I think um, Omar has a lot of, of, of good stuff out there for people. Yeah, Just great because it's so old. It's not going for any achievement. Mm -hmm. I think it's purple and gold. Yeah, it's purple. And then there's uh, the DPS Grievous uh, PvP set. It's got the dragons that come out of your shoulders and your face yep. mask. Yeah. There's another mm -hmm. one that's pretty cool. Yep, and with the new PvP changes, uh, again, you'll be able to get the red set of those too, which actually looks decent with the heroic tier set as well, if you want to mix and match a little bit. Yeah. I'll have to do that. All right. Well, any anything else we want to go over for soloing old content right now? You do get some cool shoulders off of, uh, like, the, the rogue shoulders with the, like, the, uh, it looks like cats on your shoulders that have fire trails. You get those off mm. of the first boss in Dragon Soul. Right, the ah. bats. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I like little bat bats. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. So that's the whole thing for rogues in Dragon Soul. It's like, hey, I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, more chalk. You can get, you get some, like, maces off him as well, but more chalk, and more chalk is soloable. You just have to, you know, you're going to really want to, you know, take advantage of Transcendence, take advantage of Flying Serpent Kick, roll every speed boost you have, because his stomp will one-shot you um, very easily as a Windwalker. Even if you have the 600, 700k health, um, you still will get one-shot by it. So make sure you're rotating Damp and Harm if you know you can't get out of there. Make sure you're using Touch of Karma. But even then, just get out of, get out of the range of it, and it's a fairly easy fight. But the biggest thing you have to look out for is stomp for that one, I think. Man, it's so much fun to cheese these mechanics as a monk when you're going in there solo. And we need to do this, guys. We can't let DKs be the only one soloing everything. Yeah. No? You know, there's a great video of a brewmaster <laughs> who is soloing crazy stuff. Like, he, I mean, a long time ago they had you know, Stone Guards, Heroic was soloed, all, you know, all the dogs. Um, recently, um, there's a nice thread. Or you can, if you look at MMO Champ, actually, you can see people posting videos of soloing. And there's actually one brewmaster in particular who is, uh, they soloed Dark Animus. I've seen that happen. Uh, uh, and I think they're even working on current, uh, not, maybe not this tier, but like you know, last tier, you have, you're seeing people solo stuff by themselves, which is really cool to see. It's yeah. insane. <laughs> it's not yeah, like I a Warlock soloing Immersius, but it's, uh, you see some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, so MMO uh, Champions Forums has a really good thread about monk soloing, um, and so that will be linked in the show notes, so if you're interested there, it's like 15 pages long, or no, 50-something pages long right now, yep. so uh, a lot of good information there, so feel free to check that out, and if you want to... Your, uh, your uh, OS3D Drakes. Oh, God, that's uh, so easy. Normal and heroic, you know, you can easily do that now. You know, mm -hmm. that's two mounts right there. If you haven't gotten those, you can solo. Mm -hmm. You could so you could nearly solo those at, you know, in the 480s, 490s before. So, yeah. it's uh, there's a lot of opportunities. Yeah, if you're, if you're over 550, OS 3D is so easy. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think I soloed had... heroic Ruby Sanctum. Nice. <laughs> that was fun. That's good. And yeah, I think OS 3D was a requirement of 100k DPS to solo it. Yeah. Uh, that's about it. What you what you need is that'll. Back then. That'll let you live before the first Drake drops. Exactly. 
Yeah. Uh, so any, and I remember being trying, you know, getting that 95k DPS and not having enough than 90k back then. So <laughs> right. uh, it's 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 a bit easier now with the with the item levels that we have. 500k, go. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You laugh. Yeah, and they did. I've seen, uh, I've seen air slots. Celestalon was out there tweeting again this week saying, seriously, guys, stop worrying about soloing old content. You'll still be able to do it. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of people... 110% guaranteed you'll be able to solo after the item squish. It's not going away. They like that you do that. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a good way to see old content, yeah. too, especially if you came into the game very late. Yeah, yeah they said especially the when you're stuff bored. is going to be like Kata stuff is now. So it's going to be yeah. doable, but challenging. So I'm be waiting nice for the first five-man group to do. Waiting for the first five-man group to go do heroic Shaw fear. Mm. That's that's an that's a long fight. Uh, mm -hmm. We did ten men on that, and that's a, still a long fight. Although you can you can burn them down without ever having anyone be sent off to the platforms before you transition into the weird phase. Which is kind of It'll fun. happen. Two weeks into the next expansion, you'll see somebody come out with a video five manning heroic mist dungeons and you know, mist rage, and you'll just be sitting there going, oh, you, can solo, you, you can solo uh, heroic dungeons right now, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do. You can. I do it. Yep. I do it Great as a way to beaver. build up justice points for those heirlooms mm -hmm. that you'll never need after Warlords drops because you'll never have anything less than an 85 again. Yeah. Or 90. Hero <laughs> Garrosh is, what, 16 minutes? It's a long yeah. fight. Yeah. Very long fight. Messing up at 2%. Oof. Yeah. That happened a lot to a lot of Raiders. I think Rotund yeah, was in there where it's like 5 or 6% they were wiping. A lot of people say the kite in that fight is like so hard. It's a joke. Whoever says that fight's hard to kite is a bad take. <laughs> <laughs> really rethink of what they're doing. Well, if yes, they're not a monk, it probably is. Well, I mean, even if you're not a monk, it's a giant iron star. You run around the room at a hundred. You run into the boss. That's phase four. That's it. I mean, come on. A mage could do that. <laughs> no. Any range Let's not get crazy here. <laughs> All right, well, it's time now to travel to the Peak of Serenity, the home for all monks in... Zen Pilgrimage. Monks, assemble! All right, we got a question from the dojo. So, uh, Tiger Crane asks us, what boss do you look forward to vengefully soloing as level 100 from Missa Pandaria? Darumu. Oh, Yes. <laughs> Take I, will, on that I will take pleasure in plucking that eye from his stupid face. <laughs> Damn. I oh, don't know. I, I think uh, taking out Garage would be nice. Just soloing for all those heirlooms. That'd be nice. Yeah. So. Paragons. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so bad. Everyone's, everyone's got that boss that it's like, oh my god, we did 60 pulls on this thing. One mm -hmm. of the pain end. Heroic uh, paragons. Yeah, I'm thinking Thok would be a lot of fun to solo at high level too. So. Oh, you guys haven't got to heroic paragons yet, have you? Well, um, we're we're still we're still working on siege crafter right now. I, I'm wondering how soloing siege crafter yeah, is going but... to work. Um, you just have to. You, know, you won't go up on the belt. You'll just have to chill out on the. Chill out, dude. I don't buffs. know. That'd be that'll be real interesting to see. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm I'm looking Ignore forward belts. to. Ignore belts. Yeah. You'd have to. Yeah, you yeah. have to ignore belts. Or you get really, really quick and throw Zhuen on there and hop in the pipe, kill the dude, and hop off before he goes and, away. And pop Transcendent so you can get back on the pipe. And... Right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, it's, I think, uh, from a sheer, just of being able to absolutely destroy stuff, I think it's going to be fun as a monk to solo protectors. Mm, yeah. Because you just keep them together, put Storm Earth in fire. Mm hmm and just watch the numbers skyrocket from from a, just a pure uh, fun of just just absolute destruction of everything. Lay waste to the world and don't look back. I think that'll be a fun one to try. Shamans would be hilarious four just min to watch. Four minutes Shamans later, what happened? Where'd everyone go? <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to try Lation. Try what now, Yuki? I want to try Lation at level 100. Yeah. See how that works out. Oh my yeah. god, could you imagine it's too long? First healing phase. All right, done. <laughs> <laughs> One renewing mist. Yeah. Yeah. Surging, 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 surging. All right, I'm done. That's how it is in ICC. A three surging Same mist. I was done with the yep. fight. Mm -hmm. Valerie, right? yeah. Yep. Still fun. Yeah. Ads didn't even come out. <laughs> she was still talking. She was literally still talking, and I'm here. I put renewing mist, three surging mist, and the fight's over. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I used to get beat by pallies on this Thanks fight. Thanks for the hands. But yeah. All right, so let's go over some of the community projects that are going on right now. Uh, the Monkcraft podcast just put out a new episode with Zuggy from Vanguard with a retrospective from Mr. Pandaria about mist weaving. So now Yuki and Duke, I imagine you definitely want to tune into that. Um, yes. Valen has been very active at his Nimble Brew blog, which is nimblebrew.blogspot.co.uk. Uh, knocking it out of the park. Yeah, there. so he's got two running series right now that are of interest. The first one is about monk lore. So going into the different uh, different lore figures for the monks, and it's not just pandas, surprisingly. Uh, and he has also a Wanderers in the Mist. Uh, series that he's uh, doing, which is finding weird places out in the middle of nowhere and kind of going over uh, the history and, and locations and everything like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, Cheeburst.com, our favorite forums. Uh, the front page has gotten a huge redesign uh, from so Jay Dot. Pretty. Yeah, it's very pretty. Uh, those who have the at least the Android version of Tapatok. I don't know about the iPhone version, but uh, if you're ha fine for me, okay. If mm -hmm. you're having problems, um, delete the uh, delete the forms and and add it again, and it works fine. So, all right. Anything else you guys saw out there? No. Okay. Not about Apparently not. You, right. you covered everything. Remember. All right. Well, let's. Much. Go ahead and toss to you guys now, Yuki. What you got? Uh, shout out uh, for my raid team for putting up with my constant tunnel vision on Thursday. I was tired as all hell, and uh, I was dying a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, everyone that had that time to, <laughs> to check out my stream, because now I stream the raid every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, we start... Uh, when do we start? Nine... Eastern to 12 Eastern Tuesdays and Thursdays um, want to thank you guys for checking out the stream coming on through um, giving me feedback and all that also the people that catch up on our podcast um, shout out to my wife for the upcoming Valentine's Day I scored points with that one Woo. Um, <laughs> all the monks out there in the community as well as usual uh, can always count on them to make it a better place than what it already is yes all right air i'm gonna give a shout out to so convert to raid just recently celebrated their one year anniversary so mm -hmm. shout out to ctr for bringing a lot of us together and all that stuff one of the original teams of ctr one of the ones i was able to pug with uh, my first taste of 10 man raiding was the Watermelon Initiative. So uh, the guys on that team, uh, Blaze and Spanx, Pandaria, Half, uh, Chartil, uh, uh, Jayla, and others you know, who aren't with the team anymore, it's, uh, thanks for showing me what 10-man rating was about back then. Congratulations on your one-year anniversary. I uh, hope the hangover wasn't too bad for you guys <laughs> for your night of rating. And uh, um, uh, having to do with my team, Right now, myself, uh, our Hunter Prima, and our DK Glaive, we are the belt team for Siege Crafter, and uh, we got rolling. We are, uh, you know, if I had more than one BFF uh, trinket to give to these guys, I would, I would give it to both of them, but it's, it's hard to use because we got that belt locked down finally. So, you know, shout out to those guys for being awesome. All right. <laughs> All right, Captain Crunch? Uh, just... The norm, uh, SimCraft peeps, I love you. Keep up the good work. Um, Exile Legion, uh, you're my new home. Don't disappoint me. I'll see you on Tuesday. 
that's about it, man. Uh, this community just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and I enjoy it more every day that I uh, get to be here. So All right. that's about it. Rock and roll. All right, Duke? Well, I'm starting a new job on Monday, which has me terrified, but I've been spending way too much time on Twitter, so shout out to all the people on Twitter who keep me entertained during this last week at my current employer. And man, doing this podcast is just so much fun because I get to meet so many of you and talk to so many of you, everyone that came out to our All Monk Flex. You guys were fantastic, and it was just an absolute blast to sit there the whole time, especially Suplift trying to beat every overheal meter he could find. <laughs> that was, good. I was, that that was, was fun great. To watch. Like, I, I can usually get my overheals to 200k. Let's see how I do this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, what? Kagurai LeBlue, man, he has just been, uh, he was a riot that whole time. Yes. Keep Ab- it's absolute fun. If you missed the All Monk raid, you have done yourself a disservice. You really need to come out next time because hopefully these get, these same guys will be back. And check man, it out it's just so much side. fun. Yeah, check it out, Jay Dotson the Horde side too. You know, you got there's All Monk raids happening for both factions, mm-hmm. so definitely check it out. It's it's just a blast to see entirely green raid frames. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And if you're listening to this and you haven't rolled a monk yet because you're kind of scared, head over to Bleeding Hollow. Yes, it's a PvP server. Bleeding Hollow Horde. Look for anyone in the Pika Serenity Guild and ask for an invite. I'm hanging out there at least a couple of times a week. And it's just, it's an all-monk guild started by Dot. We're having a ton of fun. There's not a lot of people out there yet, but once we start getting up a little higher, you're going to see those people, oh, I'm just going to log on to my Pika Serenity tune and run some dungeons and run some all monk raids and just have a general fun time. It's a great place to get started if you're looking at starting a monk. Yep. That was a lot of fun, so definitely shout out to Jade Dot for getting the ball rolling. I was thinking about starting it up again, um, but she was the catalyst, so she said, alright, we're running for, for the Horde. I'm like, alright, I'll run one for the Alliance. So, uh, we'll definitely stuff. Yeah, we'll definitely get that going again. Um, so yeah, Bleeding Hollow, uh, go check it out. Come run with Fatal Moo. So, should be good. Um, shout out to Lady Chai for the cup of Shut the Monk Up! Oh yeah! <laughs> and um, the Monk Meditation t-shirt I got, so she got that to me for Valentine's Day, so that's Very awesome. nice. Yep. Very nice. So, it's, uh, yeah, definitely shout out to everyone who came out to that to that Flex team. That was so much fun. I had, Even though I was horribly sick that day, I still uh, still had a blast. So, and I, think, I think the last thing I heard from you as you logged off is like, all right, I'm going to go pass out now, guys. Yeah, and that was like <laughs> at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I was like, yeah, I'm going yeah. to bed later. So, <laughs> But, yeah, I just a shout out to the community. The Monk community is absolutely the best one in the world and it's kept me so engaged in this game it's kept me away from any other game in the world because i've only got time for one and it's definitely wow thank you monks all right so i think it's time to get airs tiny and our furry little butts out of here but first let's go see those awesome five star reviews which don't exist this week unfortunately so well we should still rate us on itunes subscribe on youtube or on twitch.tv as part of the monk community if you have a blog website or person you want us to check out and show on the show reach out to us via email at show at monkmeditation.com the monk community is the best one in the world of warcraft and we want to showcase it for all of you to see daikatsu how can the dojo best reach us well, you can find the show on Twitter at Monk underscore Meditation. You can follow Chai T at Wow Monk. Now Yuki can be found at Now Yuki underscore CTR. Air the Great and Mighty can be found at Air Walker. I can be found at Daikatsu CTR, no underscore. And Captain Crunch can be found at KPTN Crunch. Thank you all so much for listening. You can watch us live for a special All Lady Monk episode with Sunnier Bear, Tiger Crane, Zillions, and Dark Lady EU on Saturday, not Monday, but Saturday, February 22nd at 8 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern Time. 
and 1700 UTC at twitch.tv slash wowmonk or after the fact on iTunes, Stitcher, Twitch, YouTube, and monkmeditation.com where you can support the show for bringing you the best monk discussion on the interwebs and even with Bitcoin if that's your thing. Monk Meditation is part of Catalyst Gaming Media. For other great gaming blogs, podcasts, and events, visit catalystgamingmedia.com. That wraps up this episode of Monk Meditation. May your bruise be strong and your heart stronger.